Hi there, and welcome back to Understanding Medications. So far in this chapter, we've introduced the histamine 2 receptor blockers like famotidine, which are used for decreasing stomach acid. And our last lesson went through some exercises to help you predict the kind of side effects that you'd expect from decreasing stomach acid for a long period of time, given the role of the acid in the stomach. And right now, we're going to make sure that you really picture the histamine 2 receptor blockers like cimetidine and famotidine and how they exert their effects. In other words, we're going to look at their mechanism of action. The histamine 2 receptor blockers like cimetidine and famotidine bind to the histamine 2 receptor in the stomach. So let's take a look at where they act. If we go down the esophagus into the stomach and took a microscopic view of the lining of the stomach, we would find that the lining of the stomach has gastric pits. And in those pits, some of those cells are called parietal cells. Now, the parietal cells are the ones that secrete the acid. They secrete hydrogen ions, or in other words, protons, into the lumen of the stomach. And they do that by using an enzyme called the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump. The parietal cell is the same cell that we affect as we take a proton pump inhibitor like omeprazole, which we'll investigate in the next chapter. So how do the histamine 2 receptor blockers work? Well, when there's a stimulation of the parietal cell from gastrin, histamine, and also acetylcholine, all three of those at the same time, not just one of them, the proton pumps in the parietal cells start secreting the protons, or in other words, the hydrogen ions, the acid. The histamine 2 antagonists are competitive antagonists. So they compete with the histamine 2 that's trying to bind to that same receptor. As you can imagine, if there's less histamine 2 binding onto its receptor, there'll be fewer hydrogen ions secreted and a reduced acidity in the stomach. In fact, the histamine 2 receptor blockers can be about 80% effective in reducing the acid secretion from the parietal cells in the stomach. We said that histamine 2 antagonists are not as effective at decreasing stomach acid as the proton pump inhibitors. But why is that? Proton pump inhibitors decrease the stomach acidity by 99%. And yes, that is difficult to beat. But why can't the histamine 2 antagonists reach that level, even if we take a maximum dose? The way that the histamine 2 blocker, like ranitidine, works is to bind to and block the histamine 2 receptor. And that binding is not permanent. The tidine medications, the histamine 2 blockers, work by competitive antagonism. They're competitive antagonists there's still some histamine 2 that's being released, and there's still some binding of that histamine 2 to the receptors on the parietal cells, regardless of how much drug is in the system. And every time that the histamine 2 gets its spot on that parietal cell receptor, as long as there's acetylcholine binding and gastrin binding at the same time, there will be acid secreted. And the last thing that we need to discuss with respect to the histamine 2 antagonists, such as famotidine, is a thing called selectivity. You may be wondering, what's the difference between an antihistamine that you take for a runny nose and allergic conditions and a histamine 2 blocker? 
or are they the same? Is a histamine 2 blocker a antihistamine? Well, we reserve the term antihistamine for a group of medications that block the histamine 1 receptor. So while you could argue that histamine 2 antagonists should really be called an antihistamine, we don't use that term because the antihistamines are the ones for the runny nose, the ones that bind to the histamine 1 receptor. And this diagram depicts that. There's three subsets of histamine receptors and they're located in different organs. When you take a normal dose of a histamine 2 receptor blocker like ranitidine, there is very little crossover onto that histamine 1 receptor. So it's of very little use in allergic rhinitis. So we say that the histamine 2 receptor blockers are fairly selective for the histamine 2 receptor. And the antihistamines that work in allergic rhinitis are fairly selective for the histamine 1 receptor. Although, interestingly enough, the histamine 1 antihistamines, some of those actually bind to acetylcholine receptors, which gives them some side effects.